Back in September of 2017, Scott Cawthon made a Reddit post talking about how he likes to use new FNAF games in order to clear up misconceptions from past games. But in this post, there was one sentence that I never noticed until recently. At the very end of this paragraph, he says, quote, Currently, there is a misconception from Sister Location that I may need to clear up someday as well. Or maybe I'll just leave it to torment the fandom. Winky face. What? You're telling me that a whole year after Sister Location came out, there is still something that everyone thinks is one way but is actually the other? That one sentence sent me on a hunt for that misconception, and I think I found it. Don't forget to subscribe, and remember, this is just a theory. Like Scott talked about in the Reddit post, he usually uses new games to clear up misconceptions from past games. Like how he used the keypad and sister location to settle the Bite of 83 versus 87 debate. And now it looks like he's finally clearing up the sister location misconception with Mike's room showing up in Security Breach, and with the sister location bunker showing up in the Help Wanted 2 trailer. Something tells me we missed something big with that game. And I believe that thing has to do with Mike's room we go back to after every shift in Sister Location. Specifically, the show that plays on the TV. The Immortal and the Restless is very prominently featured in the game, but no one seems to have come up with a clean answer for what it was trying to tell us. The show centers around a vampire and his wife. The husband repeatedly says that the vampire baby is not his. Clara, I tell you, the baby isn't mine. Every single episode, he makes it clear that that although the baby is also a vampire, it is not his baby. We all assumed that the husband and wife is Mr. and Mrs. Afton, but who the baby is seems to still be a mystery to this day. Although Michael Afton is William's son and they both turn into undead purple people, nowhere in the games does it ever hint that Michael isn't actually William's kid. Twitter user the Logical YT recently pointed out to me that the house we see in The Immortal and the Restless is a Queen Anne style house. The same style house that Edwin bought for his wife in the story the Mimic in the newest Tales from the Pizzaplex book. A very odd connection between the show and the Mimic. In my last theory, I explained that I think the Mimic is a parallel to Henry's story, and the physical Mimic that Edwin builds is a parallel to Baby. In my I Solved Security Breach series back in November, I explained that I think Henry rebuilt Charlie, then Afton stole the bot and made it his own. So to rephrase, my theory was that the Baby isn't his. Wait. The baby isn't mine! If this sounds familiar, I've actually made this connection before. Eight months ago, I said that I think The Immortal and the Restless is about how the Charlie bot isn't Williams, it's Henry's. An idea that Scott introduced in the Silver Eyes trilogy that started releasing before Sister Location even came out. But even back then, I never really made the connection that the baby isn't mine could literally mean baby isn't his. The only thing that doesn't fit cleanly is the fact that the baby is referred to as his son, not his daughter. Although you could argue that Charlie's death minigame in FNAF 2 was called Save Him, and the puppet is constantly referred to as a he, so pronouns have always been flipped around for Charlie, I think the show was meant to be about the general idea that Baby did not originally belong to William. To see if I could find supporting evidence for this theory, I decided to look back at Sister Location. And while looking through the extras menu, I was reminded that Scott added the making of some of the animatronics. Looking through Foxy and Freddy, it seems that Scott was showing off what he had in mind initially for the designs and colors of the character. Characters. Foxy had more of a light pink coloring and Freddy did too, along with not having Bon Bon or a speaker on his chest. And I knew these weren't just placeholder colors because he fully rendered and posed them with lighting and everything before showing their final versions. This is how he imagined these characters looking initially before changing them for the final game. But I only showed you Foxy and Freddy. What did Scott initially have in mind for Baby? Well, when I scrolled through the images, I found this. Baby was originally gonna be a brunette. You know who else is a brunette? Charlie, something that Scott already established at the time in the Silver Eyes novel. Scott did not need to include this in the extras menu, but I think he did to try and nudge us in the right direction. Fast forward to today and we have the story about the Mimic. That's almost scarily accurate to my theory that I had back in November in my I Solved Security Breach series. Like I said before, my theory was that Henry rebuilt Charlie, Afton stole it, and now it's an evil version of Charlie. But the way I connected this Charlie bot to Security Breach was through Mike's room. I said that the entrance of the room looks like one of the closet doors from the Silver Eyes trilogy. The Charlie bots were represented by the closet doors in those books. I also said that the wall code could connect to the Charlie bot as well, and I still believe that to be the case. To me, the wall code sounds like someone is being sent on a mission by someone who has built the breath. Since it reads, break and mend, I built the breath, and your life, your aim, will save those with soul. They are telling someone to go do something, and I believe this could be William's message to Michael before Sister Location. This would be 
the message that Michael references in his speech to his dad. I found it. It was right where you said it would be. They were all there. I put it back together, just like you asked me to. When you look at the wall code with that perspective, it kind of makes sense. William successfully built the breath. He figured out how to use remnants, but the things he brought to life in his experiments are now drawn to it. They need Michael's body so they can escape. If we looked like you, then we would have somewhere to go. Crawl, run, flash, shoot, crush the vile band sounds like exactly what we do in Security Breach, but if you think about it, it could also connect to what we do in Sister Location. Crawl, run, flash, shoot, crush the vile band. That's William warning Michael about the fun times. But he tells him to stay focused because his life and his aim will save those with soul. Michael is going to save his sister, whose soul resides in baby. In my previous theory video, I talked about in the story, The Storyteller, it's revealed that a giant white tiger head is controlling the whole pizzaplex and is responsible for the animatronics acting strange. And that the tiger head is running the same program that Edwin created called Mimic One. Back in November, I pointed out all of the symbolism relating to Nightmare Own throughout the pizza the hidden plushies, the staff bots, but most notably the wires in the arcade that look just like the puppet's arms. And now I've actually made a new discovery. In the part of the game where we're running from Vanny, we pass by this giant server room. I never really thought anything of it until now. In this server room, there are once again giant wires with the same black and white stripes like we see in the arcade. And they are everywhere and connected to everything. Not to mention this room is full of Nightmare Own staff bots. Security Breach is about environmental storytelling and Steel Wolf Studios was very clearly trying to tell us something here. I started writing this video before the new game theory came out, but it looks like MatPat agrees that a Charlie virus is in play here. Where did this Charlie virus come from? Well, if Baby really is an evil rebuilt version of Charlie, then it must have come from her. But how could this virus come from Baby if she was burned in FNAF 6? If I'm claiming that Baby slash evil Charlie bot really is back, wouldn't FNAF 6 debunk that? Well, Hold on to your seats for this one. On the fifth night in Sister Location, we hear a speech from Baby. Can you hear me? I'm going to be taken to the scooping room soon. She seems scared because she knows she's about to be sent to the scooper. The Charlie virus knows what's about to happen and she wants to make sure that a piece of her survives. So she does what she does best. She pretends. I'm pretending. Remember how I said I could pretend? There is something bad inside of me. I want you to save what is good, so the rest can be destroyed and never recovered. There is a passcode that you must enter before you can retrieve me. After putting in the passcode, this happens. A hatch should have opened. Take the card that you find inside. Now you must turn back. Michael does what she says. He takes the chip containing the Charlie virus out of Baby. Remember, Baby might be a Charlie bot running a Charlie virus, but Elizabeth died inside of her. They are both occupying Baby. Now that Elizabeth is all that remains in Baby, Charlie is more than happy to have the body destroyed. I want you to destroy this body. This is the one thing that Henry did not account for when he did the FNAF 6 fire. He didn't know that Michael took the Mimic slash Charlie virus out of Baby. Henry thought he burned everything in that fire, but that evil Charlie virus lived on in that chip. Baby literally tells us by grabbing that chip, we are retrieving her. There is a passcode that you must enter before you can retrieve me. The baby that was talking to us throughout Sister Location was always the evil Charlie virus in that chip. In Sister Location, Baby never talks to us as if she is Elizabeth. Isn't this why you came here? To be with her again? I still hear her sometimes. She talks about her as if she's a separate person. But in FNAF 6, the Charlie virus is out of baby, and now she's talking as if she is Elizabeth. I will make you proud, Daddy. That chip was ground zero for that Charlie virus that ended up running the entire Pizzaplex. But if Michael really got scooped at the end of Sister Location, how did that virus end up in the hands of Fazbear Entertainment? Well, in the story The Mimic, Edwin leaves the Mimic behind, something Baby alludes to. What is bad? is always left behind. Months later, Fazbear Entertainment sent workers to go collect the Mimic from Edwin's abandoned warehouse. Just like the two workers who were sent to the sister location bunker on night four. Uh oh, it sounds like someone else is in the building. 
one of the first workers who got killed by the mimic was literally put on a clothes hanger and hung in a closet, which is very similar to what happened to the workers in the bunker. One of the first costumes the mimic puts on before going on a killing spree was also a jester costume, which is what Baby was designed to look like. But in the story, the mimic, even though the workers were killed, it seems that Fazbear Entertainment was still able to acquire the mimic, since we learn in the epilogues that they made a mimic version 2 based on the first mimic. So if Fazbear Entertainment also got that chip in the games, what happened to it? Well, to figure that out, we'll have to look at Help Wanted. In the tapes we collect in Help Wanted, we learn that Fazbear Entertainment dropped off a bunch of scraps and circuit boards to scan into the game to speed up development. They sent us that stuff in the first place with no explanation, told us to scan it. It was just junk, circuit boards and things like that. I believe that one of the things they scanned into that game was that chip. If you haven't noticed yet, the chip also has two lights on it that shine one specific color, green. The same color that Glitch Trap is in Help Wanted and that is closely related to Charlie. So they scan the Charlie virus into the VR game and she shows up as a rabbit? At this point, I felt like I was onto something, but I immediately hit a wall. Why would the Charlie virus take the form of a rabbit that tilts its head and waves? Yes, the rabbit is green, which would make sense, but why a rabbit? Well, if the mimic really is our baby slash Charlie bot parallel, what does the mimic virus present itself as in the books? A white tiger. The same white tiger that it used to carry around in plushy form. But did Charlie ever carry around a plushie? Not in the games, but she did in the books. Its name was Theodore, and it was a rabbit that could quote, wave his hand, tilt his head, and play a recording of Henry saying, I love you, Charlie. Once again, Charlie carried around a rabbit that could tilt its head and wave, which is exactly what we see Glitchtrap doing in Help Wanted. Something a ton of people in the community have pointed out about Glitchtrap is that he literally has tears streaming down his face and spit on his lip. This connects directly to what happened in the Mimic, with Edwin crying and spitting on the Mimic as he beat it up after his son's death. So do I think that this is the exact bunny that Charlie carried around in the game's timeline? I don't think so. But I will say that I don't think it's a coincidence that at the end of Help Wanted, what Glitchtrap turns into is a little green rabbit plushie. And I also don't think it's a coincidence that in order to hear the secret audio of Vanessa talking to Glitchtrap, you need to be wearing the Vanny mask and holding that plushie in your hand. Just like how the Mimic likes wearing costumes and holding the white tiger plush. But I still think some form of Afton is in play here, since we hear Glitchtrap say, I always come back, let me out, in Princess Quest. And I actually stand by what I've been saying in my past theories. I still believe that the Mimic Virus was scanned into that game and got the spark notes of Afton's greatest hits through the minigames. The Mimic Virus then did what it does best and started mimicking him. But with the information we know now, I think that Mimic Virus was also a Charlie Virus that came from Baby, represented by the color green we see on that chip. So Glitchtrap is essentially evil Charlie and Afton merged together, which is why we see a green bunny that tilts its head and waves, but it's more in the style of Afton with purple eyes and a purple vest. So if Afton is purple and the Charlie virus is green, it's easy to see what dominoes start to fall. Glitchtrap is purple and green. The door we unlock at the end of Princess Quest has purple and green on it. The logos on Security Breach TV are purple and green. And the rabbit at the end of the Ruin trailer is purple and green with tears streaming from its eyes, just like Glitchtrap. In Help Wanted, Tape Girl warns you not to collect all of the tapes because that'll spawn Glitchtrap. But in the final tape, she changes her tune telling us that collecting all of the tapes is what we need to do to destroy Glitchtrap. There is a way to kill it. You have to let it begin the process of leaving through you. But this isn't Tape Girl talking. It's the Charlie slash Mimic virus, mimicking her voice. Mimicking voices is something we see Baby do to Michael in Sister Location. We need you so that we can leave. We need you so that we can leave. This is also something we hear the Mimic do in the epilogues of the Tales books. Quote from the epilogues. Help! The voice on the radio came through loud and clear. Help me. I'm trapped in the old pizzeria, the voice said. Kelly looked up at Lucia. It's the Mimic. So it looks like this Charlie slash Mimic virus is now running throughout the entire Pizzaplex. Like I said before, Steelwell was hinting at this through the environmental storytelling. And there's one part of the Pizzaplex filled with environmental storytelling that hasn't made sense until now. The Endo Daycare. Why would the Endos need a daycare? Well, it's because they're literally being run by a virus that was meant to mimic a child. 
child. And like I said back in November, you can find the Nightmare Yone plushie in this daycare in front of a deactivated endoskeleton. This endo only activates once you grab that plush. Like I said back in November, this to me indicates that a darker version of the puppet has been activated. So now the big question is, what does this virus want? Well, just like it says in Princess Quest, it wants out. It wants to enter the physical world, but Glitchtrap needs someone it can control to be able to do that. That's where Vanessa comes in. But Vanessa can't do this alone, so she puts the virus into the BB World arcade machine that none other than Gregory ends up playing. After Gregory also gets possessed by Glitchtrap, she moves the BB World machine into the secret daycare room. But Vanessa still has work to do. You can actually see her plan through Vanny's spray paint in the endo daycare. She needs an endoskeleton to put him into. And who better than the animatronic animal he's trying to mimic? Vanessa uses Bonnie's endo and puts the Afton virus inside of it, successfully getting Glitchtrap out of the game and into the physical world. This is now what we know as Burn Trap. But like I said before, this virus is not just Afton, it's Charlie too. And she wants the same thing. And who better a candidate than the thing that she was built to mimic? A little brunette girl with pigtails. I think it's obvious that Ruin takes place way after Security Breach. And the likelihood that Gregory is still alive and trapped under the pizza plex after all that time is very low. That's why I think Ruin is a trap. I'm trapped here at the pizza plex or what's left of it. I think the Charlie slash Mimic virus is pretending to be Gregory so that it can lure Cassie and use her body to enter the real world. Do your own research, come to your own conclusions, but in my opinion, I think Baby was once a robotic version of Charlie Emily containing a program meant to mimic her. The bot was then beaten up by Henry after the death of his real daughter at the hands of William Afton. After Baby was left behind by Henry, she was stolen by William and claimed as his own. This same animatronic went on to kill William's daughter, Elizabeth. After this happened, Baby was now a Charlie robot possessed by Elizabeth. Baby was then once again abandoned in the sister location bunker, until Michael came along at the request of his father to save her and put her back together. Unbeknownst to Henry, the Charlie virus was able to escape Baby by tricking Michael into taking the chip containing it out of the robot. I want you to save what is good so the rest can be destroyed and never recovered. Henry then thinks he burned everything in FNAF 6, but the Mimic slash Charlie virus he created lived on when it was scanned into Fazbear Entertainment's new VR game. A lot of this theory connects to what we see in the Silver Eyes trilogy. And I think it's important to say that so much of what we know today came from those books. All of these things were first introduced in those books and then put into the games by Scott. I don't think the games are telling the exact same story though. I think the books are a separate continuity like Scott said a while ago, but I think he's definitely taking ideas from them. But the only people who know all of the answers are Scott and Steel Wool Studios. And until they feel like sharing those answers, I hope you enjoyed me sharing my ideas for the story they're trying to tell.